All right, all right. God bless each and every one of you out there in Christ Jesus. This is your brother Ron, and I'm back at you again with another video in reference to the zero to sixty talk. The zero to sixty talk uh, that we ultimately have to really uh, go deeper into, explore uh, to see what God would want to reveal more in reference to the condition uh, that is within the world that we as sons and daughters of God have to be purified of and to uh, maintain the righteousness of God uh, so that God can have witnesses, representatives, uh, people on this planet that are acknowledging that they are vessels that are looking forward to the very kingdom that is coming, that is representing the uh, ultimate reality that God wants to renew the planet, renew the people, uh, renew the status uh, of the world after what he deems is good and right and true. And so, uh, so there is sin in the world. Uh, that is not new. Uh, many know of that. They, they at least know of the word. But the result of sin is what we see that is the utmost evidence of it. The, the reality that there is bad in the world. And God brings forth his standard, his, uh, the reality of what he says, which determines the category of a thing, which determines whether something is good or bad. And so he makes manifest what he declares. He, he makes manifest. He, he makes a reality. He, he, he discloses what he likes and what he dislikes. And so... In the world, there uh, is ultimately perversion. Perversion, there is corruption, there is sin, there is uh, the condition, the, this uh, sin nature that is affecting uh, the world around us. And so God does not leave it that way. God wants to equip man and or or men and women god wants to equip both genders with power to uh, become the purified vessels that not only represent the purity of the kingdom coming but also the purity of the god that is over uh, all creation and also the purity of what righteousness demands, righteousness itself. God creates this law. He creates the reality of the goodness of what he desires to see. And so the sons and daughters of God are given power, supernatural power, power that is from heaven to literally be able to conform to the image in which God is saying is right, is good, is, is pure, is powerful, is ultimately something that he desires. And so the perversion that is in the world is something that we are given power by God to battle against, to come against. And so there are things that must be spoken as to shed light in the dark areas that want to hide and ultimately be the areas that the enemy will take advantage of to keep people in bondage, to cause havoc and all sorts of um, problems of stumbling blocks to get them to not even realize why they're tripping up in the areas that they're uh, failing at or ill-equipped. And so 
God is giving out supernatural levels of wisdom and power. And so this is one of the reasons why we have been going through the book of Proverbs um, in the Holy Bible Journey series that I've been doing as of late. Uh, but, but to continue in reference to the power that God gives, God gives us power because he realizes that we, he understands that we uh, don't have the strength, we don't have the, 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 the standard, the glory in and of ourselves to be able to come against the supernatural powers that are against us. So God wants there to be levels of power and transformation, authority, and all sorts of dominion that we walk in that's aiding in the process of this supernatural transformation of us uh, from the corruption of old and into the very image of our, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, the Word of God says uh, in um, 2 uh, Corinthians, uh, let's go to it real quick, 2 Corinthians, that he who knew no sin became sin for us, um, that let's see here yes for he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of god in him so that's some that's for the believers that's for the sons and daughters of god that that's for the people who are actively um understanding that the foundation of their faith is what jesus did for mankind uh, the acceptance of that, the, 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 the aspect of being born again and all of the different things that God does as supernaturally to bring us into uh, this consecrated identity and the acceptance of the works of Jesus for us as he provokes us to do the uh, other works that we ought to do as far as the transformation process of what he is forming in each and every one of his sons and daughters of God. So he was made sin for us who knew no sin that we might uh, be made the righteousness of God in him. So yes, there is the sin that Jesus was made on the cross for the sons and daughters of God. He died um, on Golgotha. He died on Calvary, at Calvary. Uh, he uh, was ultimately whipped and and beard plucked out and bruised and um, ultimately tortured uh, for the sins of mankind. Isaiah fifty three gives us uh, specific details of the overall purpose and will of God concerning the sacrifice, the the Lamb of God that Jesus was to uh, be the very propitiation, the payment for the sins of mankind uh, so that we could have access to the Father uh, through taking on this special uh, 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 garment, this, this, this being, receiving this adequate sacrifice for the remission of sins. And, and so, and so through that access, we can now be the righteous, righteousness of God. We can enter in through this door and we can be who God uh, wants us to be. We can continue in the direction that Jesus is leading us as he uh, strengthens us and desires us to be matured after the mind and heart of the Lord uh, and Savior. And so the righteousness of God is being formed in the sons and daughters of God. And, and so, so we have to battle against the perversion that is in the world. We, we, we not only battle it in reference to the maturing 
of our own minds and hearts and bodies after the righteousness of God, but we also know that there is an attack against the condition of the world that we go forward and that we do because uh, we have a responsibility to uh, come against the conditions of societies around us that have accepted ways and cultures and traditions that are ultimately causing the people who God wants to redeem to uh, live and, and to function in ways that are contrary to the ways and will of God. And so, um, so zero to 60 is something we talked about last time in the last video in reference to the condition of mind that has been infected by the world, by the condition of the world, by the sin that is in the world, also the sin that is in the bodies of the people. So you have the, the perspective or you, you have the reality uh, that one's mind, a person's mind, if it is not chastened by the fear and admonition of the Lord, uh, if, it, if it's not uh, strengthened by the power of the Spirit to think and function in a uh, godly way, if it's uh, if there has not been works of righteousness that has been cemented in the heart and the soul of the believer, you're going to have uh, uh, um, uh, characteristics and, and behaviors that are running rampant in the mind that has to be chastened. But so zero is where we know things at a factory level is attractive and beautiful um, and good, but uh, but sixty. When you go uh, to sixty, you have the aspect of how perversion can set in, and uh, there can be a desiring of a uh, of a particular thing um, in an illegal fashion. You know, um, we we talked about the reality of how uh, fornication can manifest in the thoughts if it's not chastised um, along the route of one's thinking. You know, you can have at the beginning, uh, something is nice and, 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 and there's uh, thoughts of innocency, but then as it, as a thinking transitions, it can lead to something that, uh, uh, in reference to the, the stealing or the fornication or all manner of what Paul talks about, lasciviousness. And, and so the reality is that God is trying to strengthen the minds and hearts of the believers to possess their souls, to have strength, to have the conforming of their thoughts into innocent and pure and ways of righteousness that counteract and get rid of the old ways of and, and traditions of the world. God is trying to uh, purify the people of God, secure the sons of God. And so uh, one example that I was meditating on is... Uh, one of the kings of Israel, Solomon. So uh, Solomon was a king um, who had much. He had much um, that was given um, to him from God. Um, and God had requested of him that he had not indulge himself with the many uh, uh, foreign women of the foreign nations that he, he would not multiply uh, uh, multiply wives unto himself of the foreign nations and he he was warning God was warning Solomon um, because he wanted to ensure that these women didn't turn his heart didn't take his heart and connect his heart to the cultures in which the women came from. 
the cultures of the foreign nations that were around Israel. So the reality is one of the things about perversion that we have to state at the beginning here. One, one of the realities about perversion is perversion takes the image or the face of beauty and it, it steals the face of beauty and beauty is good, but it steals the face of beauty and it changes the purpose by which the beauty is to manifest or execute. There is a changing. And so this is what we're talking ultimately in reference to the zero to 60. Because in the beginning, when we look at something, whether it be a person, place, or thing, whatever we're looking at, it can be nice. It can be pure. It can be good, whatever it is. But the condition that is in man in reference to the sin nature takes what is beauty and it causes a mutation, a perversion that leads to the changing of the purpose of that beauty, the changing of the foundation of what the beauty is supposed to maintain, what it's supposed to represent, what it's supposed to produce. And so, so this is ultimately what uh, perversion does. It's, it's like the, what the... Um, what Jezebel did in reference to Jezebel who would paint her face, a character in the Bible uh, who was the wife of Ahab. And she would paint her face because ultimately she was a vessel of, of seduction. She was a, a vessel of seduction and she uh, would ultimately do things as to control from under the covering of her husband Ahab. And so this painting of her face was a symbol of the attempt to take beauty, but then have the underlying um, perverse desires that ultimately led to sin. Um, the, the word of God talks about um, the attire of a harlot, um, you know, and the, the word of God also talks about in the book of Jude that um, th there's even a hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. So the sons and daughters of God, we know, that there is a hating of the clothes that are designed by the carnal mind of the flesh. The carnal mind of the flesh makes clothes, makes attire, makes garments that are specifically tailored to meet the requirements of the way of a sinner the way of a whoremonger, the way of a harlot, the way of, of a thief, a way of whatever a person is doing uh, that is of unrighteousness. And so this is why modesty is such an important thing in Christianity. This is why we, uh, as men or women, we dress in ways that represent our worth. We we cover ourselves. We uh, dress as uh, the the people of royalty that we are, kings and uh, priests, uh, princes and um, princesses, royalty before the Lord, because uh, we have a worth that comes not from us per se, but from God, because we are redeemed, uh, and God has given us the identity that. Uh, can stand uh, within this world of perversion um, that is ultimately going to reap the destruction that is coming, the wrath of God that is coming for the ungodly that is in the world. So, so in reference to Solomon, the story of Solomon, 
uh, we have Solomon being warned of God not to marry the multitude of women from the nations around him. But we, we know that Solomon doesn't um, listen to that command. Uh, and he, on top of that, he positions himself to be seduced into doing uh, specific things at the request of these wives that he would marry from foreign nations. Uh, the, in in reference to the fact that he would build uh, houses and temples for the gods uh, that um, are celebrated in these foreign cultures of these women. And so God warned him that there would be a turning of his heart. And so as I was meditating and asking the Lord, you know, why, um, what are some of the characteristics to why um, God would have warned him of, of all things, of this particular thing? One of the things that I was um, considering is the reality That Solomon was in a condition to where, and not only was he um, older in age at this point, but but even if he wasn't, the reality is there is a importance in the keeping of the standards of God in reference to the king that he was being promoted to be there there was a king uh there was a standard a loyalty to god that he was to represent and so with these foreign women there is a beauty that they have there's a beauty that the choice women of these four nations have. There is a beauty. But with that beauty, it's not just the fact that they have the beauty. It's, it's also the beauty is attached to traditions and cultures. It's, tr it's attached to something else. It's, it's attached to foreign gods. And so that beauty was the covering, was the face, like Jezebel, the painted face that masks the agenda, that masks the underlying problems that would come about as these women who were celebrated in their cultures. You know, um, let's go to... Um, first Kings celebrate. These women were celebrated in their cultures. These women were, uh, princesses were princesses that were the daughters of Kings that came from Egypt that came, um, uh, from the Zidonians that came from the Edomites that came from the Ammonites, the Hittites, the Moabites, these Women were celebrated in their countries. And so what we see is that not only did the beauty of these women come, but also the culture attached to the beauty came. As we were saying, uh, the painted face is a representation of beauty, but there's also uh, the agendas. There, there's also the underlying uh, things that come along with the painted face, and so pervert. And so this is a this is perversion. This is perversion. God didn't want this level of perversion to manifest in the kingdom of Israel. Did not want this level of perversion to manifest under Solomon's rule. 
Solomon should have vetted his wives, should have communicated to them that they, the, they themselves, the beauties that they are, could have come in, but their gods would their their spiritual standards, their spiritual perspectives, their spiritual uh, identities had to stay within their the boundaries of their country. So the problem is that Solomon became vulnerable. He became weak. He be, there's parts of him that became compromised that allowed the corruption that came through the beauty first, but then ultimately the perversion of these foreign gods come in through these Trojan horses, in a sense. These Trojan horses come in and infiltrate the very king, infiltrate the very individual that is supposed to uphold the standards of righteousness, that's supposed to uphold the, the, the truth of God, that's supposed to uphold the, the way of Israel. So with the with what happens here Solomon is in the condition to where now there is an infiltration of all of Israel all of Israel begins to worship they be they be the, these idols begin to be uh uh accepted these these ways, these practices, these foreign cultural ways, these traditions are being accepted. So the the Israel that was uh, brought to life again was now on a downward spiral, becoming corrupt and 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 full of perversion. And so God, uh, this is one of the reasons why perversion is something that has to be addressed. There has to be an addressing of the unrighteousness, of the impurity, of the corruption, of the, uh, the addressing. And so this is what the men and women of God, we address it in our own lives and we address it in the world. We address it because we are given power of God, from God, to uh, be the examples of transformation and our houses and our lives being uh, lives of circumspect behavior and purity and power, uh, uh, glory being manifested uh, to be different. So Solomon did not check these women and cause them to leave their gods at the door and they, they themselves come in only. But he allowed the corruption of these foreign gods to come in but but the foreign gods are not who knocked on a door and asked him to come in. They came in through the Trojan horse. They came in through the face of beauty. They came in through the painting of the face like Jezebel. They, that was what came first. That's the deception. That came in and that's how the deception happens in order to allow the the baggage of the the traditional the spirit the spiritual baggage the traditional and cultural baggage of these women that's how that came in he 
was hypnotized by their beauty and allowed the agenda of the enemy to come into Israel and corrupt Israel. And so God wants to enable the sons and daughters of God to be people of prophetic discernment that are able to gauge and, and fine tune and, and understand what is happening so that they can be themselves examples of transformation and also preaching and teaching the transformation that God is able to do by his power. God is able to do specific and strategic things to enable sons and daughters of God to see clearly what is the problem and what are the solutions. And so the word of God talks about, you know, uh, in, in the book of Proverbs, it says not to lust after her beauty. Because the lusting after her beauty will pull you down. There's a pulling down. There's a weakening. There is a, uh, you know, and so this is why God wants there to be a lawful pro uh, uh, process. That he wants there to be covenant. wants there to be marriage uh, before we engage in the benefits of of marriage, the, the benefits of covenant, the ben the benefits of righteousness before the Lord. And so when we apply this to zero the 60, we understand that there's a control that God wants to bring as admonishment. So there's two things. There's two things. There's two things that, that we, we can um, speak about in reference to the admonishment uh, that comes about when uh, people are young. You know, it, it's, it's a good thing to be raised up under the fear and admonition of the Lord. Um, the godly instruction and manifest uh, uh, admonition of the Lord. It's good to be raised under that, to be built up um, under that. But one of the important things about that is that you have young individuals that ought to be given supernatural instruction and power and grace so that they can apply, so that they can apply and see results based off the testing of specific things under the covering of the uh, of the godly home there's a protection in that and so there are levels of strength and power that are given to the young as they grow and mature after the identity of Christ so so this is the good this is the perfect scenario this is what God ultimately wants but so many people in this modern day are being aren't being raised under that covering they're being raised to where the the television is is their parents you know they're being raised and the uh, perverse unsaved individuals in a neighborhood are you know their parents and teaching them things that uh the godly should be teaching them um they're being raised by their school the the the, the public schools that they're attending you know uh, and, and and there may not be um, the right influences uh, within those school boundaries, you know. And so we we are uh, not being given the godly instruction that will aid us and strengthen us into and after the righteous personalities that we ought to have, as to have the structure that's necessary, so that we will not entertain the perverse behaviors that want to cause us to go from pure and beauty to perverse and pornographic and fornication and all sorts of other transgressions that God does not want for us to experience. And, and so 
so yes, there is that aspect in reference to the, the godliness that we are raised under, which produces righteousness, and that's uh, beautiful. But then there's also the righteousness uh, that can spontaneously happen in reference to the born again experience, in reference to the fact that God desires to save. He desires to renew the mind by his spirit. He, he embeds the Holy Ghost into the body of the believer. Um, and now you have supernatural discernment and ability to scrutinize the thoughts and, and to uh, change the behavior uh, through the applying of different principles and, and the being the individual that ultimately the Spirit of God is forming the believer into. And so that's a beautiful thing. And so these are, this is ultimately what God wants to see. But we're seeing that in this modern day, there's all sorts of, uh, there of course is the ungodly influence, the uh, satanic, the demonic influence that has the agenda to to make the people corrupt, to make the people evil, to make the people ungodly. And there is the corruption that is happening that is causing uh, the, uh, the people to not understand that they are not equipped to, uh, they, they're not equipped to understand how their body works, how it should work, how, um, how the atmosphere around one is affecting one. Uh, how the, the bloodline, what's happening in reference to family history and the decisions that uh, one may be falling into because they're ignorant to how things work and, and what's prompting them to go in a perverse direction when they don't really want to. And so the enemy is doing all sorts of things from different fronts to hinder the manifestation of stable sons and daughters in Christ. God wants to give the sons and daughters of God power, authority, glory to be able to address these things and to see uh, with, with powerful, with, with uh, wisdom that will enable them to uh, go beyond the frailties of those in their past and to be examples of what God says, what Jesus says is possible in this backwards generation and culture. And God is doing this in such a way that reflects the radical contrast. There's a radical contrast to where there are those that don't even know that things are possible, don't even know that they can be free from certain perspectives and certain identities. And others who are full of the wisdom of God, understanding what's happening and, and how uh, you know, the word of God says in, I believe in the book of Proverbs, um, the, the righteous consider the cause of the poor. Um, and, and so we're talking about those that are ultimately slaves to sin. Because those who are walking in righteousness, righteousness and wisdom produces riches. And we're not talking about just monetary. What we're talking about the fact that there is pleasure, there is peace, there is love, there is joy, there is uh, all sorts of goodness that comes through the application of wisdom and righteousness. And so God wants the people of God to know that as they live out the right way, the true way, the, as they are being led by the spirit that God has placed in them, 
um, the Holy Ghost, they are being placed in position to gain multiple levels of rewards, not just in this life, but in the life to come, eternal life, life with God. And so there is a secret plan of infiltration that the man and woman of God must uncover. As we talked about last time, there is a predator mentality that has to be annihilated. So we know that the black widow is uh, in a sense spoken about in the book of Proverbs. It's not exactly spoken about, but we know that the black widow's design God designed this animal, um, so the, the female spider, uh, a black widow, she is bigger than the male. And we know that in this um, insect kingdom, this black widow spider ultimately um, uh, procreates with the male um, spider and then kills the male afterwards. And uh, the male ultimately becomes food, I believe, to the uh, black widow spider. And so this is um, a part of God's plan, <clears throat> you know, a, a, a degree, a degree of his plan, uh, because we know ultimately uh, animals are not supposed to attack and kill each other. The, 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 the idea that animals have to kill and attack and eat each other is a manifestation uh, or a consequence of what happened after Adam and Eve sinned. The word of God tells us in the book of Isaiah, I believe chapter 11, a prophetic chapter that talks about how Nothing will kill in God's holy mountain, meaning that and, and in that chapter, it gives uh, a contrast uh, and it gives comparisons of animals. It talks about specific animals that should be predator and prey to each other, but it, it gives frequent examples of the fact that this animal which should be a predator is going to be at peace with this animal, which should be prey. And this animal that should be predator to this animal is going to be at peace with this animal that should be prey. And this animal is going to uh, uh, be at peace. And, and the, the young child is going to put his hand on the cockatrice's den. They're going to put his hand on a den uh, uh, that has a dragon within it. Uh, so, so the dragon is not going to be able to kill the young child. The, uh, the, uh, the lion is not going to kill the lamb. The, um, you know, the, the wolf or the other animals of prey of, of, of uh, other animals that are predators, uh, uh, will not kill. They will eat. Ah, they will eat straw like an ox, you know, um, not to say that that's going to be their diet ultimately, but we're seeing that there's going to be a peace that manifests because that's the overall agenda. That's the identity of heaven. That's the atmosphere without sin. That's the atmosphere without pollution. And so God, uh, you know, wants the world to return to this condition of peace, this condition of truth, this condition of righteousness without sin, without uh, perversion, without corruption, where beauty actually manifests as is as um, um, manifest as its rightful purpose filled design. Beauty doesn't transform into something else. Beauty maintains its identity along the course of its purpose and design. It doesn't go zero beauty 
60 perversion. And so God is trying to enable us to have the heart and mind and transform soul that resembles the heaven, even though heaven is not here yet. God wants heaven to be on the inside of the son and daughter of God before heaven even comes. Heaven is on the inside of us because the Holy Ghost is in us, but heaven also should be inside of us in reference to the transformation of our conduct, our emotions, our personality, our behavior. There are many different things that are being transformed on the inside of the believer in preparation of the kingdom of heaven to come and invade the earth. And so God is the, the one who specializes in this. He is doing this supernatural work because he desires to be with his children. The children are the apple of his eye. The children are the precious part of his eye. You don't want to touch the precious part of God's eye. Th 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 these children are people that God is securing and protecting and and uh, uh, grooming and and uh, uh, making perfect for the time in which he's going to uh, be rewarding and giving out many gifts and and all sorts of positions and treasures and all, all, many different things. And so, God hates perversion, and the sons and daughters of God hate perversion, but the sons. And daughters of God, we know that we have a love for the people because we, even though we can see sin on the people, we desire that the people renounce the corrupt and perverse and the wicked ways and to take on the personality identity and ultimately be born again of Jesus. Jesus wants the people of the world to be born again. He wants them to be spiritually transformed. They may have been born one way, but God wants them to be reborn and to manifest a new identity. And so it doesn't matter what their history or their past was. It doesn't matter how wicked and how ungodly and what sins that they did in the past. If they only have a willing heart, if they only believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and trust in them, trust in him with all of their heart, mind, soul, strength, if they only accept the gospel message, if they only receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, receive the water baptism, receive the uh, the mandate of advancing the kingdom of God. Jesus said that you must deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. And so <clears throat> perversion is an enemy, but perversion, there needs to be the prophetic discernment of perversion so that actions can be done to eradicate its overall agenda because it comes in through beauty, but it manipulates and then kills because of the overall purpose that it's trying to do under the mask. And so, so the black widow spider at that's spoken about in the book of um, Proverbs, in a sense, uh, where the strange woman that's spoken about in the book of Proverbs, the strange woman, she, like the black widow, takes what is necessary, takes the precious substance from the male, then kills the male. The strange woman lures this simple man to ultimately steal 
is still his destiny, still his anointing, still what precious substance he has. And behind the black widow's house, behind the strange woman's house is ultimately death, is a graveyard, is uh, a, a, a place in which remains all of the foolish and the simple uh, that were ensnared in her uh, flirtatious, uh, her flattery, uh, her words of, uh, of enticing uh, um, language. And so God wants to give people before knowledge to be able to soberly see what is happening. Why am I feeling this way? What am I seeing? What's really the condition of things? Because the man of God or the woman of God has to be able to hear God and allow God to lead them. One of the things that ha is happening in the world is that people are looking for uh, spouses. People are looking for, you know, husbands or wives and everything. And so one of the things about this is that God doesn't want men and women to look for each other. Um, in the sense that Man is supposed to be focused on his job, is supposed to be focused on uh, the development of who he is and his responsibilities. A man of God is doing a uh, man of God's work. He's doing the necessary things and the development and the growing in his personality and who he ultimately is. Um, and... When he does find a wife, he finds a good thing and he finds a wife. He doesn't find a woman who's looking for a husband. He, he finds someone who is already walking in the characteristics of a wife. Someone who, who's al who already knows how to do this, do that. Someone who's already been trained up in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. Already walking in levels of godliness and purity and, 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 and living in such a, a, a place of honest report that, yeah, she's already a wife. She doesn't have to switch gears and turn into a wife. No, no, she was already walking in wife-like characteristics. A man of God, a husband, he's already walking in husband characteristics. He he already has. It. He doesn't have to switch it on and say, "Oh, I'm a husband now. Oh, I'm a wife now." No, 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 no. So the 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 man of God who finds a good thing, who finds a wife who's a good thing, that's that's a good thing, and and he and God wants it to be a good thing. And so there needs to be the allowing of the spirit of God to ensure that where he's leading one is the reality of what they're actually seeing and not them wanting to make what they see what they want. Not going from zero to 60 as if they are in control. Uh, the man and woman of God are Letting God lead their life, letting God manifest the reality. And so they're not uh, going to manipulate situations, uh, manipulate dreams or whatever and say, oh, you're my wife or you're my husband uh, and uh, say things uh, that later on they say, well, um, yeah, I didn't have that dream for real. I, I just was so infatuated by you that I just decided to say that. Um, no, we don't, we don't say, thus saith the Lord, when the Lord has not said. In the Old Testament, people would die for that. But because of, there's grace, people will say things, but not feel the fear that's behind saying such a thing, saying that God said, you know, we cannot 
be the type of people that says God said. Um, and so there's a purity that God is is uh, making us into. There's a love that's manifesting. There's a truth that's manifesting. There's a, 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 a inner security and peace that's manifesting. There's a there's a a joy of the Lord that's sustaining uh, the people of God. And so there, so so we have to know and understand that God is trying to make us innocent so that he can present us with valuable things that we're going to take care of well. A young boy, uh, a, a, a young boy uh, um, should already understand overseer. He should already understand the principles of that. He's gonna go. He's gonna grow up and be that one day. He should already be. be he should already be in training to understand. Oh yes, I protect. Um, I won't let. I won't let anything happen to my sisters. I won't let anything happen to these young girls. Uh, um, you know, yeah. So, is everything okay? You know, popping his head, popping his head up to make sure the standards are being met. Yeah. You know. It, you know, he's already being taught overseer. He's already being taught. He and and God is giving that him that understanding. He's already being taught to be about his business, be about his father's business. He's already being taught to uh, to be diligent and to uh, you know walk in the the level of righteousness that God desires him to exemplify. So the, so the passing down of this knowledge and and the training and the uh, the the examples, not just not just the the do what I say but not as I do, do as I say and as I do. And I don't have to be afraid of you doing as I do because I'm walking in the righteousness of God. I'm do as an adult, I'm walking in the righteousness that's going to reflect the type of righteousness that those under me should also exemplify. And so that's the truth. And, and, and God is ensuring that we expose those areas of our minds, what, what we were taught by the media of this world, what we were taught by our classmates uh, in, um, you know, in the, uh, the different grade levels that we were coming up in, uh, what, what, we, what we learned, what doctrines we learned without even anything being spoken, just by watching something. And we registered something. We registered uh, what we think we should do based off what we saw and the outcome of it. And so God is re-strengthening the, the mind of the believer and helping the believer to know the truth between what he expects from us and what he wants us to ultimately do in reference to the promptings of his spirit. And so God wants us to be able to uncover the, the false beauty, the perversion, the painting of the face, the Jezebel and Athaliah type spirits that are in the world that are trying to be like a black widow trying to come and steal the anointing. Or you can have the male version of that trying to come and pollute the woman of God, pollute the daughter of God, pollute the princess of God. No, we, we have to be the women that are uh, are understanding that God is supernaturally leading the people of God and the the women who understand that they are valuable no matter how long they have to wait for their husband no no they don't have to take on the perverse mindsets of the women of the world they don't have to start dressing like the women of women of the world in order to you know whatever 
Uh, you know, they don't have to take on the personalities of what they see out there. They don't have to practice the customs of the Zidonians, the customs of, uh, you know, the a Amorites and the Hittites and whoever else, or the 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 perverse ways of the the modern day civilizations the the chinese or the europeans or the 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 the, the women from france that are ungodly the women from canada that canada that are ungodly the women from brazil and 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 uh, colombia that are ungodly no we don't have to take on their personalities we the the women of God know the structure that it, that is laid up for them with in the Word of God the the counsel of the Lord the truth of God and not only that not only listening to those that are above you the women ought to teach the women the men ought uh, you know as far as uh, what the Word of God says in uh, Peter um, the older women ought to teach the younger women. Uh, and, and stuff like that, uh, but we but we know that there is the reality of the glory that's transferred. There's a strength, a purity that's transferred, wisdom, all sorts of things that's transferred through uh, the teaching, through the the glory. Um, that God wants to make manifest um, within his congregation, within his people, within the sons and daughters of God. And so there's, uh, you know, many women in the world that are confused, that, that don't understand the proverbial uh, uh, virtuous uh, characteristics that they ought to live out. And so they're hypnotized by the the modern day um, entertainers, you know, and they, they, you know, many of them in, in, in this modern day talk about um, things like um, words that I would net, I wouldn't dare repeat, but uh, to, to kind of give a description of it, they, they talk about the harlot phase. Many women they talk about this phase, this time in which they feel that they ought to be loose and do things with whomever, you know, and that's the level of depravity that is in this modern day. And it's, it's sad because there's a devaluing, there is a, a lack of honor, a lack of, uh, you know, true glory that the woman um, ought to have but doesn't have because of the simplicity, because of the lack of godly leadership, the lack of godly uh, uh, prompting and instruction. And so the, the people perish due to a lack of knowledge because they ultimately reject the knowledge of God. They reject the, 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 the identity that God wants to give them apart from the, 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 the evil and the sickness and the pollution and the fornication and all of the different acts that ultimately harm them. And so God is trying to make people new. He's trying to make people whole, trying to make people strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. M make people understand that they are of great value in God. And this value is going to be solidified when the, the new world comes and we see that there's no longer the profane that are on the earth anymore. It's going to be only the remnant, only the people of value, only the elect. You know, the word of God says um, that there's going to be all sorts of deception in the last days. And it says the reality of even the elect will... It's impossible for the elect to be deceived, but the deception will be so strong that 
even the elect would be, uh, if not on post, uh, would be ultimately uh, terrified at the height of deception. And if it wasn't for the glory of God, they would be taken away. But God is able to save them. And it says, where will the sinner and ungodly lie? Of course they won't um, make it. Of course they will be totally wiped away and ensnared by the corruption um, of the wicked one, the, the, the great deceptions that are in the world. And so it takes a purity that is manifesting and happening in the people of God and understanding who they are, walking and growing and living out this wonderful identity that God says is possible and he's giving mankind the power, specifically the sons and daughters of God, power to actually manifest that power through the transformation so that they can ultimately uh, gain all that God wants them to gain, uh, want them to have and want them to uh, be engrafted into. And so God is doing a supernatural work, uh, a work that is beyond the comprehension of man. It's even beyond the comprehension of angels. Angels are not even given the fullness of fullness or, or, or the awareness of what God is ultimately doing. And so it is a special work that God is doing all this and there's going to be a select chosen few human beings that are made in the image and likeness of God are going to be granted the opportunity to make it past the perversion of this world and into his goodness forever. That is amazing. We, we truly serve a loving God, a faithful God, a holy God. And so God is imparting his glory, imparting his grace, so that we can be able to be pure in mind. Our minds are able to be cleansed, spring cleaning. Yeah, it can happen. God can make sure you, you can think that, no, my thoughts, you know, things just come in and come out randomly. I, I, I seem to uh, control it only to a degree. No, I'm telling you, you can do it. You can be delivered from the, bombard, the bombarding thoughts that you think will not uh, cease until Jesus comes back. No, God wants you to be equipped. God wants you to be at peace so that you can be a testimony, a vessel of peace that is completely a honorable uh, person that completely is in position to not just show the people, but be a direct contradiction of what the enemy says can't happen to the slaves in which he is attempting to program and attempting to keep on a leash. Uh, you know, they think it's impossible to be delivered. But God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. So that power is available. And what people think is naturally impossible for them to be delivered from in order for them to be pure in heart and mind and soul, God is able to do. God is able to make you pure. That, meaning that you just have a few thoughts, a few thoughts that are pure, not a bunch of crazy, uh, pornographic, crazy thoughts that are just entering uh, your mind's door at whenever 
opportunity and time they would like to. No, that's a thing of the past, a thing of ancient in reference to, in reference to those who have put in the work those who have exercised the, the, the peace and the joy of what the word of God dis discloses. This is why we eat the word. This is why the sons and daughters of God, we, we, we can see a difference, a vast difference from our minds in the past and our minds now in the Lord. There is a cleansing that happens over time. There is a purity that happens over time. There is a sanctification that happens over time that we can thank the Lord for because God delights in that supernatural process that testifies to his power, that testifies to the fact that he is the one who is in control and he's making vessels of honor for his ultimate glory in the end. And so we have the power to come against the perversion and to not allow uh, the Jezebelic like ways, the uh, the corrupt Amnon type ways, the uh, corrupt Athaliah type ways, the uh, corrupt, you know, um, uh, um, you know, the the men of uh, Shechem who uh, who who. Uh, Ultimately, lure, lure uh, Dinah, uh, Jacob's daughter, into um, you know fornication, um, and and many other examples that we see in the Bible. Um, you know, you don't want we we don't obviously don't want to be like Samson, you know, uh, walking in that that level of perversion, not fulfilling the very uh, calling that he was designed, that he was uh, anointed of God to actually fulfill. So we see so many examples of people being distracted with that, and that's what the that 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 spirit of perversion wants to do. It wants to distract the people. You know, when the people are supposed to be focused on their identity, and then it comes, and then when that perfect time comes for them to have an intimate companion that happens but it's led by god and that's the beauty of it and so the man that finds her at that time finds a good thing and she's ready she's a wife she she doesn't have to hurry up and be a wife she was already a wife and so god is trying to purify the people and help and help the people who have committed to god who are in covenant with God, trying to keep them pure. So there's a keeping of, of purity of the people. And God is strengthening us. He's strengthening uh, the, the sons and daughters of God to, to maintain what he has started. The word of God tells us that um, in the book of Philippians, um, it says that he that has begun a good work in you shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ, until the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so as we journey through this life, God is adding to us and preparing us for the overall end result that the people of God, the, the true people of God are going to ultimately inherit because of their faithfulness because they live by faith and not by the sight of what things look like around them. Because they were the just that lived by faith. Because they were the people who understood that uh, their works would ultimately be judged. Uh, and that because they lived in righteousness, that their works would be rewarded with goodness, with everlasting uh, reward. Um, the word of God tells us, you know, in reference to the return of the Lord Jesus Christ, um, behold, uh, 
uh, behold, I come quickly. Jesus speaking. Behold, I come quick, come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according to his work shall be. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending, the first and the last. Blessed is he who who uh, who does uh, my commandments, for he shall have a right to the tree of life and shall enter in through the gates into the city. And so God is preparing a remnant people so that they can become the ordained of God so that they can fulfill the shoes of the ordained of God uh, and ultimately see the very promised, expected in that the people of God are supposed to and ordained to see. So God bless each and every one of you. And um, as I always say, feet follows focus. So focus on the Lord Jesus Christ and your feet, my feet, our feet will follow in the mighty name of Jesus. Love you.